All right, we're live, and uh, we're back with another Icon Workshop uh, Hangout. This time, we have the man, the man, <laughs> which I hope the cameras are now <laughs> pointed at, uh, Lapu Kalamandre, the guy who uh, you guys all owe uh, for the way GNOME looks today. And he's going to do some, I don't even know what he picked as the demo stuff, but he's going to show you some, some of his tricks uh, when he's doing the high-resolution icons. Uh, we also have Hilke Bons, who's responsible for the awesome tool that we use for uh, of collaborating remotely uh, as designers and also with uh, you know, making it available to the engineers, Sparkershare. Hello. And we have Gert Lazage, who does everything. And uh, uh, we just, uh, today or yesterday, we played around with an idea for uh, improving the, the visuals of the tabs. And suddenly, his, uh, his mates that work on the Advaita Firefox theme implemented that as, a, um, as the uh, skin in, in Firefox. So we have a working prototype of that. We didn't have to do anything and suddenly <laughs> appears. So that's, that's great. Just a random, random thing. Those um, guys are so pretty awesome. I will, I will uh, hand it over to Lapo, who's going to show us his tricks. So I'd like to demo some advanced features of Inkscape, like cloning and stuff, masking. And I choose uh, to draw an object which is which used to be very famous this one also if you look this is an original windows nt installation <laughs> floppy i have an os i believe 6 as well the floppy quality is better eh? so i know the, the the icon is not usable at all but it's uh, it's quite good for demoing uh, what i'd like to show you so yeah, it's it's gonna be very handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Save icon, <I'm>, uh, right? <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Let me see if I if I can share my screen. That would be helpful. Okay, I have to share the whole desktop, I believe, because uh, otherwise uh, it doesn't work. Okay. This is a random picture I picked up on Google. <laughs> I think uh, it could work. So I stick it uh, in a separate layer and uh, I'll move it out with the keyboard. There's a nice trick here as well, uh, since uh, you can move stuff uh, with the arrow keys. Uh, pressing Shift, uh, it will move the object uh, 10 pixel each click. So it's quite handy to move an object and place them back quickly. So I'll move out uh, the object from uh, my main uh, canvas. I move the level at the bottom of the pile, lock it, and then I start drawing something on top of it, which I'll use to mask my real flop. OK, why well, it doesn't work. Let me make it black, decrease the opacity to some extent. And see. Okay, there are, uh, I'll use the major, the major lines on the grid we have in the default template you can find uh, in the no icon team uh, sources. Okay, this is not accurate. Let's see something, wow. Inkscape is lower than usual. Okay. Yeah, the screencasting doesn't yeah, help. Doesn't with that. help. Mm. <coughs> I see. So this is the base shape. Let's let that some little detail here and there. Let's say this one. Why oh, it's mapping it never work as expected. Okay. 
this could work. I'll move this object in another, yet another layer. I call it service. So, as you can see, the object uh, has, uh, doesn't have nice, nicely rounded corners. I have a trick to do them. I do an offset. I shrink the object, uh, the amount of pixel I want my radiuses to be. Then I convert it to part. Offset again and grow it back. So like this, uh, I'll add uh, rounded corners everywhere, even uh, if the object is not a rectangle. So. Nifty. Yeah. It's useful. So, this is my main object shape. I'll use it for the mask. I need an object to mask first. So, I draw a slightly bigger rectangle. It doesn't need to be accurate by MPK. So, let's place it in the correct layer. What's up? Okay. Let's increase opacity, otherwise I forget. I'll do a link a linked offset here, which is Control Alt J if I remember correctly. But they need to be on the same layer, otherwise it doesn't work. Control Alt J. Okay, got it. I use this one for stroking. So I add a two pixel stroke in black. I group those two objects together. Then I'm going to apply the mask. The mask will be a clone of this object. So I clone it. Copy and paste on the right level. and apply the mask. Here we go. This is my base shape. Now I may want to add some details. <coughs> Let's say this one pixel, okay, this one marks me at the moment. It doesn't have to be too accurate because uh, nobody will notice me. Maybe I should point out that uh, an object or a group with a with a clipping mask applied still behaves like a group. So you can enter the group yeah. and then add new objects, and the clipping mask will. Hey, be you're more ruining amazing. you're ruining the suspense. <laughs> Sorry. As you can see, the clone, which is masking the object, followed the, mo the modification I did there. Same for the uh, linked offset. So I have my object with a nice border. Now I'm going to add uh, these all. When, in when Inkscape allowed me to. Yeah, the unfortunate downsides to, to, to using <laughs> clones and, and linked offsets is that okay, things get really slow really after slow. a while. And magically, the hole is there as well. I do the same for the other side.
So this is the base shape of the object. I can yeah. uh, shade it and stuff, but uh, we, we'll do that later. I'm gonna fill this all. Okay, and this is the basic the basic floppy shape. So there are some details we can add here. Jakob killed these children probably. Yeah, with a mute button. <laughs> Does it work in real life? Yeah, try it. Get some kids and <laughs> test it. So, I always use the other flop as a base. If I enter group editing with the masked group, I can add the object directly on top of it and it will be clipped as the rest of the group. So it's quite handy for stuff like that. This object is a tad too big for me, so I'll... Okay, it looks better. Same for the bottom. Okay. The bottom part ends here. Yeah, it's it's very useful to have a reference image. Um, yeah. So doing device icons is usually much easier than anything else. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a real world objects that you can, you know. That's have why you pick the floppy. <laughs> so the meta plate. I move. I move these out of the group. And shape it similarly to the other one. I'm gonna I'm not gonna put this one in the group, so I cut it out. And place it back where it belongs. Doesn't look okay, so we're gonna move it a bit. Maybe you should mention the the grid yeah. setup you have and and the snapping. That yeah, 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 yeah. I, I go on that later. Okay. So. That's mostly it, that's not uh, exactly accurate, but who cares. So, about the grid. The grid is uh, as major lines uh, every four pixels. This is for being able to shrink down the, the icon four times to 64 by 64. It helps for uh, orthogonal lines and stuff. Uh, if you have round objects or very complex shapes, uh, it's not uh, it's not helpful at all. So, but for this kind of things, uh, sticking to the grid is always better because uh, it it helps when you scale down the icon. Considering that GNOME Shell doesn't use 200 and 56 
icons but 96 by 96 so we have to be careful that they work uh, nicely at that size but we will see later how to do that so this is mostly the floppy shape we can add the label on top of it let's get this one Okay. I'm gonna cut this one as well because it won't be inside my group since it's not needed. So the basic object is done. If you can see, it scales. What's up here? It scales uh, almost nicely. It's impossible to achieve uh, a perfect result, but yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't bad. really translate well to the Google Hangout yeah, <laughs> right now. Yeah. But yeah, it's it snaps better. I, I don't consider you know pixel perfection important above the like 48 by 48 uh, but it helps it helps if it's not it helps for the borders because the border darkening trick we're doing uh, it's important to be noticed even uh, when scaled down so usually uh, it's important to work on this grid for orthogonal object but then you have to try moving the objects around one or two pixels uh, vertically or horizontally to make the the borders stand out. That's the important part. The rest, uh, mm. there are tons of details uh, which will be unnoticed uh, when scaled down, but the borders are very important. So be careful to have them stand out even when scaled down. So, shading. What am I shading? Okay. Mm. Ah. Our light source uh, is somewhere here. Eh? I'm inside the group, so <laughs> okay. The border darkening trick, which is the last thing I would like to do because uh, it makes ink, ink scape even slower. I usually play with radius of the blur and uh, stroke thickness. I like how we get to learn a bit of Italian as well as in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I forgot to, to set the language to English. So. I move the object out of the way. I think I can group up these parts and shade them together. I have no idea to shade it, uh, I need to, to play with it a bit, by the way. The 
important part is the highlights and shadows. So, since you are in a masked group, you can duplicate the object, place it inside the group. And very quickly, you will have the shadow here. Okay. Wow. This cap is lower than myself. Okay. Same thing for the for the highlights. Despite what Lapo is doing right now, we do use a straight uh, above light source on on all of our icons. So he's shifting the light source slightly to the right. Yep. Then it's on a matter of tweaking it until it looks good. The process is usually long. Okay. This is a bit too strong. Come on. It's quite painful to <laughs> to work at this speed. This is why you always need the beefiest computer you can ever have for running Inkscape. There is no such thing. <laughs> Get the best that you can all the time and keep upgrading. Yeah, yeah. Come on. OK. I'm not sure what you're getting. Here it, it is very, very slow. I hope it's a little bit faster for you. Well, I'm, sh I'm sure it's not faster than what you're getting, but it looks reasonable. <laughs> Clearly, this needs a lot of love. Well, we're not aiming to make a perfectly shaded icon. Yeah, yeah. Wants yeah, yeah. to demo the the whole process, so feel free to move on to the label. Well, the label is all about shading mostly, so it's the same kind of thing, anyway. This still needs a lot of love uh, in shading. Uh. This is too intense. Well, so anyway, the label is easy, so I'll skip it. The highlights. We used to make uh, the objects highlights on the sides and on top. Uh, to, to make the borders uh, stand out more and to mimic uh, what we do in the smaller sizes. It's quite important to do proper lighting because it makes the object, uh, it, it adds a lot of depth. So you'll have a nice shiny object. We can do something like, uh, something like this.
I just copied the link of set I used for the stroking. Well, I'm making it a little bit smaller. So it's exactly the same object as is used for the clipping mask, except the fill is, oh no, he just went away. I guess his his whole <laughs> X crashed right now. <laughs> anyway, I'll describe what he did there, the, the last thing. I hope he didn't, didn't lose the work. Um, it happens from time to time. Um, so he used the same object as he had for the clipping mask and uh, it was a uh, linked or made it to be a linked offset so we can change the, the size while keeping the um, sort of um, overall shape intact and uh, uh, set the fill not to be there and then use the stroke to form this highlight on the edges and then he's going to use the, the, the gradient uh, radial probably gradient to, to shade it to to be glossy on on certain edges. Well, let's hope he comes back soon. Oh no! Joining back. Ah. <sighs> We have anything to talk about while half has gone. <laughs> no, I certainly don't. Maybe I'll I'll reiterate um, some of the um, functionality that, that we're using, but I, I need to resize my desktop. Uh, that would be system settings, displays, and set it to something reasonable, like that. I'm still here, that's good. And then I can share my desktop, Ta -da. and then I'll make so the things that, that we're using for, uh, you know, having the mask separately that's nicely editable and, um, and have it um, also, f you know, form the actual artwork. We don't use uh, clones, which are in uh, clone, create clone, because anything any style applied to the parent object always applies to the to the child. So what Lapo is using is uh, linked offset. Offsets are what he used to do the rounding of an irregular object. If I'm gonna you know create this into this, so he used it. You can do I think it's in path path offset. So if you create an offset. The object is, whoops, why doesn't that work? The object path, uh, dynamic offset, okay, so it's dynamic offset. So path, dynamic offset. So the control that you get is not each uh, node of the path, you get just one and it, you know, as you scale it, it's going to try to like keep the it's like out out, out uh, lining the 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 object itself. That's how he did the rounding of the edges. But there's also an option. This you know works on the object itself. But if you create a linked object, uh, linked offset. Sorry. Uh, it creates a a duplicate object that does have that behavior. So you still have the original one which you can edit. I don't know why I probably messed up somehow. And the um, the linked offset follows the shape of the original one. And we use it 
to not do any funky offset itself. So they behave just like um, just like um, clones, but the child does not inherit the style of the parent. So then you can have um, you know um, an object in the scene or in the in the canvas and have the, the children have their own style. You can achieve the same thing in the case that that Lapo used uh, with clones because they do allow you to unset um, uh, a fill. So if I clone this, is it Shift D? Is it Alt D? Yeah, I guess Alt D. So if you unset the parent, then you can set the children to have a independent um, color. But I would now really want Lapo to come back, which is not happening. Uh, I guess he has issues with the connection. Uh, Lapo seems seems here. Well, I'm afraid we have to we have to end it here despite not finishing because I have nothing prepared and Lapo's not here. So I guess uh <laughs> that's uh, that's an unfortunate end to this to this uh workshop. Um we'll try to announce the next one so that you can even join the uh, GNOME uh, design um, channel and, and ask questions so we make it a little more interactive. I hope you... Uh, <laughs> scary clown. Um, oh, it crashed. Okay. So maybe, maybe Lapa will come back. Can you rejoin? Oh, we can demo the the Inkscape uh, <laughs> Inkscape uh, safety feature, uh, but if if X crashed, I'm not sure if it actually did anything. Oh, it's just the G G plus ah, That's good. Okay. okay. Now is probably a good time to talk about saving files and saving. Files. <laughs> yeah, we're st we we still we're we're drawing an icon of a floppy, which is a perfect uh, thing to draw in the world where we still have to push a button to save your document. Right. Yeah. And one of the best things you can do is try to save into uh, a Sparkle Share repo, so that way it's automatically backed up. And if you're sharing it with other people, they get the changes immediately, too. But even if you aren't sharing things, um, like, for instance, I set up uh, some Git repositories on my NAS, uh, network storage, that uh, basically I just saved to. Sparkle Share automatically just saves copies all the time. So that way I don't have to worry about the hard drive on my laptop or anything else like this. And I just have backups automatically. It's really useful to do. It's like okay. a stuff I'm you know, just saving all the time. Inviting the master again, so hopefully he's gonna. And he's back. Excellent, the master and is back. back. Okay, so you can. So, you can. I tried to screen share once. Where, where did you left? <laughs> uh, I demoed. I 
clones and and uh, linked offsets for a bit, but uh, we were really desperate for you to come back. So, welcome back. <laughs> I don't know. I noticed your ping on Irk. Uh, otherwise, I was continue speaking uh, alone. <laughs> I, I felt lonely. <laughs> Let me try to screen share once again. Now he's gonna show a fully completed uh, icon, and we're like, uh, "How did you do that?" Nope. Okay. It's the magic step. <laughs> yep. I just pushed the make proper icon button. <laughs> so this is I don't know if I was where, where it crashed exactly by the way I was uh, speaking about shadows we use two rectangles one on top of the other usually with different uh, blur radiuses uh, and different uh, opacities levels so this one will be the bigger one Wow. I use, I think, Scape being slow, but this is uh, way too much. Maybe stop compiling WebKit in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not compiling anything. That's the scary thing. So, well. This needs love as well, but it's getting there. The problem with masked object is that I don't know why is kept continue thinking the masked part is important, so selecting stuff underneath it is problematic. Anyway, it's getting there, but it still needs a little, a lot of love in shading and stuff. But it's getting there. The base shape is there. So, about making it nice. Uh, I think we missed how you did the the, the highlight on the uh, mm, you know the, mm. the the linked offset. Um, oh, wow! Ed the edges. I did a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, I did point. <laughs> so just, just play that. Yeah. Also, there's a quick tip. Um, if you notice there, the Tango icons are on the side. I mean, it's Tango colors, sorry. Um, if you want the Tango colors on the bottom, um, you can click the little icon down in the bottom right, right next to the the color palette on the very bottom of Inkscape. Yeah, yeah. Book. Status bar, just for those who want to know. So I take the linked offset I have uh, I have used to make the the border stand out. Duplicate. Remove the blur effect. Make it a little smaller. I think one pixel is enough, but we'll see. Then I apply a radial gradient to, to the stroke. And I'll tweak the gradient in a way that we, it will only cover the sides of the object. This is fast. Oh no, it crashed again. Let me just make sure that he knows it. You crashed again. Let me re invite, re invite you. Oh boy, this is not. 
working out all so well. By the way, um, if anyone's watching and has any questions, you can go to the um, GNOME-Design um, uh, channel on uh, uh, irc.gnome.org and uh, post your question there and uh, we'll get to it in the dead uh, silent moments like these and he's back great um, I'm using stable software yeah? yep very it's much not so. my development machine <laughs> so where, where did I leave? Uh, the stroking uh, the, the edge highlights edge highlights I won't do it again because uh, it's crazy. Do it. Do it. I mean, it's, okay. Let's it's, see it's not, it's not that that Google Hangouts is a specific <laughs> function that that <laughs> watches you. It dates me it. as usual. <laughs> maybe anyway. maybe Google does have something like that. Let's <laughs> re screen share the whole thing. Third time's the charm, right? Okay. So I take uh, the link of set removing the blur. I make it white and shrink it a bit. I set the stroke to one pixel. Then radial gradient on the stroke and they tweak the gradient in a way it just uh, involves the sides of the object here we go then you can tweak uh, the gradient the opacity of the object uh, and stuff like that to to reach the wanted effect. This one could work, I think, more or less. By the way, at any point, if things start to get really slow and you're sort yes. of done with tweaking where the linked offsets are, you can always convert them to regular paths. Indeed. Well, but you don't have to, to, to move the the linkers, the little linked offset match. Once you find the right position, you're, you're done. You can tweak the stroke size. That's what I do usually. You can make the stroke uh, more than one pixel to make it more evident and stuff like that. Anyway, I don't like the way the highlight goes uh, on the holes, so I'm going to convert it to path and remove them. And if needed, I add something manually to the old. But this is kind of quick to to do the, the size strokes to the main object usually. You could use the same process for the for the top stroke or just a rectangle or a line, which is faster now. Yeah, I don't I don't know if um, if you have any better trick, but I usually overlay the same path. On top of each other to 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 get the like the top highlight. If it needs to be yeah, more yeah. complex than just a single radial gradient, but then of course it's a little tricky to pick uh, which one it is because the, the the preview that you're or the feedback that you're given is always just you see the properties uh, of the you know fill and they're exactly the same. So it's just that's the problem usually. Harder to to work with once you have it. Set up. Now, at the moment, it's harder to, to to place the offset in the right position because it's low as hell. Anyway, I love what radial gradients. Modify one of the paths, like the top path, and remove some nodes from it. Um, if wow. those are not That's visible, slow. for instance. Do like a little dangling tail on the side that doesn't have uh, the, the color, so it's visible in the outline view, but 
Yeah. <laughs> you can also have the um, the outlines on for when you hover over objects or when they're selected to right. Just right. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Except that it repaints it <laughs> like a slideshow. <laughs> so mostly there. Well, need some love uh, and tweaking as usual, but the highlights are there. And it should and it should be quite quick, <laughs> not this time. Though. So I was doing the shadows here. I, I'll do it again. Probably it crashed before I I even started. So my metal part will cast a little shadow on the background plastic. So I just duplicate the object. I'll insert it in the group, entering group editing and pasting it inside. I'll make it black, add a little bit of blur. Yeah, all the things that, that we used to do with strokes on the on the low resolution icons, we usually do with uh, you know duplicates and, and having a little blur on them, so shadows and you know the, the inset shadows and that sort of thing. Indeed. To make escape slower. Yep. <laughs> no, it's it's uh, so that it feels like a stroke at the um, initial size, but if you zoom in, it still looks good and doesn't you know change into this thick stroke uh, illustration. Indeed. So. What I care about is to show you how to tweak uh, the whole thing to look better at 33% zoom, which is 96 by 96. At, at the moment, uh, it sucks. <laughs> so what I do usually is to grab the whole object and move it around uh, some pixel. When I see the borders stand out, uh, I stop usually. Okay, I think I got it. So, as you can see, the object is not inside the, the grid lines as it was before, but it looks good, so I'm fine with it. I will probably move this around as well. Orthogonal objects are more difficult to are more difficult to do considering scaling and stuff it's always messy. Anyway, you have to try slightly moving stuff around at different zoom levels. What what we're interested in is 32%. Good work. I think I can stop sharing my screen to avoid the crash mostly. So, so maybe maybe what what I didn't cover last time, and uh, if you want to just quickly go over how to uh, once you're done with the with the um, high resolution icon, how you go about creating the low res ones, because we used to start with with uh, focusing on the low resolution icons and then you know go from the small size uh, but now you usually want to start with uh, with a high risk one so how, how, how would you how would you go about doing that with this object I won't <laughs> because there are clones and link to set involved so usually the thing we could do here is to unlink everything and to unlink the clones as well. 
then scale the image down. Because if you use, uh, if you start doing uh, stuff like that with clones involved, uh, linked or set involved, uh, Inkscape will be very slow and crashy usually. I so usually just get sound. get rid of all the the the, the blurred objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except shadows. for the shadow. No, I actually yeah. did the shadow usually. Well, you you keep the shadow, but I mean, except for the for the shadow, way I, I I did you know um, get rid of everything else. Um, all the detail that I've worked on goes away. You know, just redo redo the outline with something with a stroke so that it's pixel precise. So it sounds like, well, you've already done the icon and you're going to scale it down and you're done, but you are you have a easier no, job. Especially, but, especially but you do for orthogonal redo object is not. Yep. Orthogonal yep. object, it works redo. It, uh, it's yeah, and you even change perspective, time. like for, for the 22 by 22, it usually yeah, is yeah, a different yeah, yeah, object yeah. completely. But maybe 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 you wanna demo that uh, some other time on another icon probably because this one yep. uh, is not good. When there is a very rounded shape, you can just uh, scale scale the whole thing down, removing uh, unneeded details, and uh, add back a stroke. I usually just get the object outline and make it two pixels uh, stroke and place it on the back right. of the object. That works yeah, yeah. most of the time. Yeah, we don't we don't have the inset and outset borders in Inkscape. It's always in the middle of yeah. the of the shape. So we we do the thing that that Lapo just mentioned. Well, thank you, Lapo. I think it was uh, except for the for the two crashes, uh, it was uh, extremely helpful. And you can uh, you can finish the icon. It's on uh, it's on our share if you want. Yeah. Well, you picked a very useful one, so <laughs> you know you know that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I I think we have a lot to do, but a floppy icon is not one of them. <laughs> anyway, thanks all of you for uh, for joining in. Thanks uh, Lapo especially, and I hope we're gonna. Have something more to talk. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, Hilke could do a session on Sparkle Share, how to set it up, and even like, uh, well, G Garrett is our, uh, probably the uh, the Git master among us, so we could we could get like a primer uh, for um, Git for for designers, and then Hilke could uh, could, well, Garrett would start. With, with Git and confuse everybody and and you know uh, rip their hair out and then Hilke would would have a session on on Sparker Share which would impress us by taking all of that uh, knowledge uh, and uh, making it irrelevant. Well, it's not really irrelevant, but uh, making it useful. less painful. Yes, it is. It is. Why? Uh, so so did awesome. I did did I hear a yes from Hilke? Is that is that a yes for uh, <laughs> no, next week? It, yes. Or be after this. Okay, week. you're on mute right now. <laughs> Sorry. We can't really hear you all that well. Oh. Okay. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Excellent. Will, so everybody. It will next week we question about C sharp as well, though. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care.